So you got yourself some assets, some top-down assets to facing bottom, facing left, facing right, and facing top. And you want them somehow to be assembled in a way so you can walk with your character in your screen in a way that allows you to not have this crazy spiderweb here that <laughs> honestly makes no sense. And you only, in fact, need to have something like this. Well, if you are interested in learning how to do that as fast as possible, come along that I'll teach you this right now. So, let's start with the first thing we need, again. We have only this camera here. Let's, for now, deactivate our player. And with our camera, uh, again, we want to change from skybox, that is what comes by default, to solid color. Come at the game screen here and change it to however you like. I just chose this hue of, uh, of green here because I find it nice to look at. Your game tab might not be here, might be here, but it's just because I don't like seeing those separate, so I just dragged mine to the bottom. Don't worry about that, it's not, nothing special. And your second step is to create a, a game object, call it player, or whatever you like, honestly. And you need to add a sprite renderer, a rigid body 2D, a player input, and a, this script here that we'll talk about in a moment. But let's do this on this one. Sprite renderer, renderer, rigid body 2D, player input, and this controller here that we'll talk about in a moment. Well, over at our sprite renderer, we need to put any, any sprite in, at all. In this case, I'm just going to open my visuals characters take my first one here and by the way if you have received those sprites in the beginning and don't know what to do with them just put them over at your project go to sprite editor slice automatic slice and they're going to be sliced like this i just uh i've changed my sprites to 75 pixels per unit and by the way all resources that you are going to need on this lecture are going to be down below okay so you can access them for free but by the way uh, once you've done that just choose one of them go back to your player here drag your sprite here and that should be it your mozina should be here uh, stopped in time <laughs> in this first moment that's all you need to do right now in the sprite render in rigid body 2d the only thing that i'm going to change is the gravity scale to zero just so my sprite doesn't fall um, to the ground and beyond right now in the player input here is something that uh, you are going to need to do but it's very fast to control your character with the new input system you just need to come to window package manager wait for it to load because it takes uh, like 10 seconds or so once it loads you just search for input here input systems you click on this you are going to click on install mine is removed because i already installed it after it installs it it's going to pop up a uh, pop-up in your face asking to reboot the the editor you just accept it and then you are going to have something like this to add to your player a player input and nothing is going to happen here and what's going on here well i usually cl click on create actions just so he creates a default set of actions and if i search for it right now here it is let's search for it in the in the project if i double click on it you can see that he it has two actual maps the player and the ui and in the player it has move look and fire and move has a lot of options the left stick in the gamepad the the w ast in the keyboard and a lot of others right here you don't need to understand fully it right now you just need to understand that it comes with a very default set of movement and common actions and it it tries to be as comprehensible as possible but in our case in our scenario here once we do this you can see that the set behavior right now is sending messages to all those uh, methods here the own device loss the own device regained etc etc all moves the method that we are going to use so finally we create this script just come back here on scripts click create this script and let's walk down through this script because there's really no no big mystery here on how to make this move without having a spider web in your animator all right here we are the the entirety of the script takes like something like 80 lines or so but trust me it's very simple the first thing you're going to do you're going to create all those cost strings uh, regarding all the names of your animations and by the way to create them you just come to your sprites and come to your player and by the way we forgot to add an animator here you add an animator and at this point already we can just start looking at our already created one previously and let's just activate it and delete the one we were creating just so you can see the final product already and over here we have this animator let's just expand it 
collapse the other one. And the animator has a controller. I just created it myself. And once you create your controller by having your game object highlighted, you just come to animation and start creating animations. You just go here, create new clip, and let's just create a new clip for the sake of it. You'll save it wherever you like. I just saved it inside my character's animations. Uh, let's pretend that we didn't create anything. Let's just go idle down two, idle down two here. And once you create it, you let me just drag it here just so we can face it in here and also in here. I came to my character. I know it's going to go from zero to seven, the idle. Just drag it here, drag it here to be a little more spaced. And I just play to see how it's going to be right now. It's very simple. It's a little bit jaggy, but I don't care about that right now. And you just go doing this for all, all the other animations you're going to need. Uh, the walk down cycle is from 8 to 15. And the 16 to 23 is attack. 24 to 31 is casting. And this one's getting hurt and dying. <laughs> Uh, poor little girl. But by the way, the, I don't need this one, so let me just go back to my visuals, characters, animations, and delete this one right now. I do down two, all right? But by the way, that's all you need to create. And regarding your animator, you don't need to do anything at all. Just leave it here. You don't need to connect anything at all. That's the beauty of it. And going back to the script, you just type the correct names here. Just make sure you don't mistype here. And then we have our private stuff. Our private stuff is going to be our rigid body 2D because we're going to move our character through rigid body movement. Uh, the movement input that we're going to get from the new input system. Our animator to change animations through code. Our current state, where we are at right now. And where we are currently facing because when we stop our player, we want her to be idle but facing our current facing position. Uh, that's as simple as that. We have a speed over here that we can tweak as we like it. We have our horizontal input and our vertical input, but honestly, we don't need to have those because only with the movement input we can have what we want in this case. So that's it for the variables we have in this class. That's already 20 or so lines. And then we have some methods. The start method, that could be the awake method as well. There's no problem in this. We just grab our components. We grab our rigid body and our animator over here. No problem. And that's the beauty of it. On this own move is the method we talked about earlier talking about the new input system. We're just listening to it here because remember, it was sending messages uh, through these methods. And this one receives this input value. There's a, we just decided to call a movement value. And then we're putting it in our movement input over here and getting the vector two out of this. So in our update method, we're just updating our horizontal input and our vertical input according to our own move method, if we are moving or not. So that's why, what I meant that we didn't actually need those two because we could always be only looking at the movement value, our movement input here and asking to see the X axis and the Y axis, but why not? And in our fixed update over here, and we are already halfway through, we just check if we are moving. If we are not moving, we stop movement. And we stop movement, what we, do we mean by this? We just put our velocity as zero and we change our uh, animation state to where we are currently facing right now. But let's take a moment before looking at this. Let's go back and look. If we are moving, our velocity is going to be those. And then we decide the next animation state by taking our horizontal and vertical input. So here we just have this situation that could be easily changed for a switch statement. That's probably the suggestion here. Yeah, indeed. And it's very simple. If we have horizontal input here that is bigger than zero, we change to walking right. And then we are facing idle right when we want to stop. Uh, the same thing for horizontal smaller than zero. We just need to walk left and face the and make the player face left if he stops. And otherwise, in the vertical position, and again, it probably can be changed to a switch statement, we need to walk up and walk down here. All right. And finally, finally, change animation state, change animation state. That's the final method we need. And in this change animation state, and by the way, that's why we save the current state, just so we don't need to be running these every time. We, If we are still in the same state as before, we don't need to do anything, so we just return. That's the guard clause here that protects us to, from doing anything else. Here then we do a crossfade to a new state. And by the way, I have to thank 
Taro Dev for <laughs> teaching me this this week with his animate like a programmer. Uh, I'm going to link the, his video somewhere in this one, just so you can see it too. And then we change our new current state to the new state we have. And that's it. That's as simple as that. Uh, you can go through this code as slowly as you want. It's also going to be in the resources down below, but it's as simple as that. If we play it, we have our Morzina walking freely all through the screen here. And if you like this video, please give it a like down below. If you like very nice and clean Unity tutorials like this one, please consider subscribing. And if you like uh, a lot of other videos about game development, game design, and some other crazy stuff, you're in the right place and subscribe as well. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.